Hello, this is Eric with Banging Group, and in today's video, we're going to learn all about the Seed Per Later web part. Here are the topics we're going to cover today. What is the Seed Per Later web part? When should we utilize it? And how to utilize it? So let's start with what is the Seed Per Later web part. Seed Per Later web part allows you to pin or favorite certain pages from a SharePoint site and access them from wherever this web part is present. So it creates a sort of personalized experience for every user. And let me show you what that looks like. So when should you use it? You should use it if you ever find a page that is helpful, if you ever keep coming back to the same page, or if there's a reference page that you use all the time, maybe you should use the Save for Later web part so you can have quick access to those pages that you need to come back to. So the Save for Later web part, I just added it straight out of the box right now. And it's got a couple of features, but let me show you, you can tag some content first and I'll show you how you can customize the web part. So I'm going to go here into our news. You can tag news as well. I'm going to click into one of these. So here we are in the marketing new VPN connection procedure. In order to save it for later, what we have to do is scroll down to the save for later section here. And we have two options. So we can, if you click the ribbon icon, it will save it onto your save for later section. There you go, save for later. If we click the words, it will bring up a list on the side navigation of any items that you have saved for later. So you can see the only one I have is the one I just added now. Cool, so let's go back into our home page where our web part is, and that should be present. So as you can see now, since I have that page save, as pinned as saved for later, we'll see it here in this section. And as I continue to add and add more pages, these tiles will continue to fill up. So let's try that. Let's see marketing lunch. I think this would be helpful. So I'm going to save that as well. Go back to our home page, and now you'll see it here as well. So it's as simple as that. And if you ever want to re uh, remove one of these, all I have to do is click on the ribbon again, and it's going to remove it from your web part. I'm going to re-add it just so we have more content. So if you want to set up the web part, all you have to do is there's several ways to set this up. Let me show you. So we can edit the web part and you can choose the source. So what this means is, do you want to show all saved items that these users have saved across all your sites? Or you can choose to configure it to only show saved items from the current site. Currently, I have, by default, it shows all saved sites, all saved items. But if you find it more fitting to show items from only the current site, then you can set this option here. Moving now to type. So this web part says that we have the option to tag documents as saved for later. But unfortunately, as of the making of this video, the feature to tag documents as saved for later is no longer supported by Microsoft. So we can only tag pages and use posts as saved for later. And you can choose how many items to display on your web part. You can choose to either display them as a grid or a list. I'm a very visual person, so I always prefer the grid. Um, and I like this, this feature here. It's pretty neat. It says you can check this checkbox and it'll hide the web part if the user doesn't have any content tag to save for later. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to enable it I hit republish. And currently I see the web part because I have pages tagged, but as I remove them, You see that suddenly the web part does not show for me anymore. It's gone. But if I add a content again, it will show it once more. So that is a save for later web part. I hope you find it as useful as I do. And I hope you learned something new. Thank you.